Good morning. Whew. How are you? Welcome to another move sesh. I'm tired. <laughs> I am tired today. I slept good though last night. Last night I had a good sleep, but it's almost like you know, you get that good sleep, and then you're almost like more tired. That's kind of that's kind of how I feel. All right, so let's get going. How are you? Good morning. Is at least a little cooler today. This morning, I know it's going to be hot later, but it's a little nicer. Betty's at the cottage. It's probably just absolutely perfect up there. I guess you probably don't get the humidity up at the cottage. So as we get started, like I just did, told you guys I'm tired, just kind of take a self audit, take a take notice of how does your body feel today? Are you feeling stiff? And you know, are you sore? My legs are sore, my legs are pooped. That Tuesday workout and then I did a couple of hard runs this week. Oh, my legs are feeling it. How do you feel? You know, is your energy high, is your energy low? Are you kind of in the middle? Um, do you feel tight anywhere? Do you feel sore anywhere, um, you know, like just take note, how do I feel today? As you, as we go through the warm up, um, think of allowing the warm up to come out of you. So think of, think of, um, can't speak, see I'm tired. Think of not forcing and pushing, but just moving with your body, how your body sort of wants to move in the sense that you know, maybe your heart rate, like if you feel great, fresh, um, energized, you know, you might push into the warm up a little bit more than if you're feeling tired and kind of like, oh, I had to drag my butt to get in here today, then you might take it a little easier as we, as we start. If you're just starting um, working out, just started exercising, Maybe you're going to keep the whole warm up at the intensity that we're doing right now, which is low, no intensity, um, which is perfectly fine. That's what I want you to do. I want you to assess where are you at, where are you starting from, how are you feeling today, um, what does your body need today, right? Um, and maybe you need to slow down to speed up. Maybe you need to just get it done today. That's that's the day that I'm having is a, it's a, okay, I'm just gonna get it done today. <laughs> uh, it's not a day that I gotta like say, I can't do it, but you know what I mean? Um, other days you're like, I've got all my resources and I'm running on a full tank of gas and you're like, I'm going, going running with it today. So I hope that makes some sort of sense that you're gonna, I think one of the most important things about doing this at the beginning of every workout is training your mind that you're not you're, you're not the enemy, right? Like we're what we're about to do, we're gonna to do together, so to speak. Like you're trying to train your mind to embrace what you're doing instead of fighting what you're doing because when your mind is against you, right? You're like, yeah, I know I should work out, but my mind is telling me I don't want to. I wanna sit on the couch and drink my coffee or I wanna go back to bed, or whatever, whatever it is. That's a hard battle, and the mind is powerful, and you're, you're almost always gonna lose the battle with your mind, unless you have extraordinary control over your thoughts, or unless you learn to placate it. I like to think of placating my mind. I'm, I have a lot of, my mind, my mind is a busy place, as I'm sure you guys can imagine. Okay, so I'm gonna add a little hop here, you can keep it at low intensity if you want, or you can add a hop with me, whatever is best for you. There's no judgment, no criticism. We're all here putting in the effort, putting in the time, and what it looks like doesn't matter. <laughs> um, it's funny because I've been reading a book about the mindset for ultra running, for long distance running, and it's interesting because my mind is a busy place. I think too way too much. And I'm learning now, not that I didn't know this already, but there's a lot of energy. 
energy required with thinking. And a lot of it's wasted energy. So, I mean, I'll give you an example. We worry. Are you a worrier? Do you feel anxiety? Do you feel fear? Do you feel stress? Do you get stressed? Do you worry easily? So, I have a teenage daughter. Well, she's not a teenage daughter. She's a young adult now. She's say that. My friend has a teenage daughter. We're talking about the worries that they take on. So, an example was she got invited, not my daughter, another friend's daughter, got invited to a party. And it was like couples. And her boyfriend couldn't make it. And she was super stressed about going to this party kind of spiraled in her mind into this big production, but going to this party and being the only one without her boyfriend there. And it's an example of how we worry and stress and emote about things that are fabrications in our head, right? Like we worry about, let's say you have a big bill coming up. You, you worry about, oh my gosh, how am I gonna pay that bill? do in two weeks. Well, that's two weeks from now's problem. And I think part of it's like, we're taught to plan. And for me, it's like, in planning, it's that saying, right? If you don't plan, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So we're kind of trained, like you gotta think of things ahead and try to get ahead of them before they happen. But what happens is we worry and stress and have so much anxiety over stuff that actually might not even happen. And so lo and behold, this daughter found out that, oh, half the other boyfriends couldn't make it to this party either. So it was like, well, all that stress, all that worry, all that anxiety over something. So I'm literally 46 years old and just learning that half of what I think about is irrelevant. <laughs> Well, probably more than half of what I think of it. Most of what goes through our minds isn't relevant. And think about the energy that that takes up, not only in the mental space of the thinking itself, but also all the spiraling of emotions that comes from those thoughts. And so for an example, you know, I'm already in my head about my long run tomorrow. Why? It's been so hot this week. How hard it's going to be, how many, all the problems. And it's like, what I'm trying to train my mind to do is shut all that off. Like, go out and see what happens. <laughs> and one of the ways I do that, and this is kind of how I got on this topic, is I tell myself, you don't have to do it. And this may not work for you, because I know for some people, this wouldn't, this wouldn't work for, but for me, if I let myself off the hook, I think Heather, you said that this morning, if you remove the expectations, it's the expectations that stress you out, not the actual thing. And so it's the worry, how am I gonna feel? How, how am I gonna handle feeling like that? And that's ultimately, I think, what stresses me out is, if the expectation that something's going to feel a certain way and how I'm going to handle it, right? So a lot of, you know, I identified recently for my upcoming race, I had a lot of stress and anxiety around racing in the last couple years that I did races. I didn't do them all through COVID and just prior to COVID I had stopped because the anxiety just got to me. And you know, I'd say, well, why would you do things that cause you that much grief? But if you think about life and all the things that we keep ourselves from doing because of fear and anxiety, it's worth overcoming that. It's worth figuring out how to get on the other side of that so that you're not holding yourself back from doing things you might really want to do because of anxiety and stress. And so I know full on, full all too well, sometimes doing these sessions for some people, some of you, if you're just starting or if you're 
um, haven't started yet, that anxiety and stress is connected to the expectation of, oh my gosh, it's going to be hard, I'm going to be uncomfortable, it's going to hurt, what am I going to do in that moment, I don't want to not, I don't want to feel that way, I just don't want to quit, and we just don't do it. So for me, I realized a lot of the stress and anxiety is around how do I handle it? How do I respond to it? How can I solve it? Not the it itself, if that makes sense. So it's interesting that you kind of realize that you go, okay, well, I guess I, I guess that's kind of a silly thing to be afraid of. It's valid, right? To be afraid of, well, when push comes to shove, when the chips fall, am I going to be able to handle it? Well, I guess you don't know unless you try. And it's certainly not... The, the other thing I think, as we all know from going through life, when you make a plan, <laughs> plans don't unfold the way they're supposed to, ever, right? Hey, hey Darcy, hey Heather, hey Yvonne, hey, I feel like romper room, <laughs> romper room with the mirror. Um, hey guys, hey ladies. We're doing Tabata today. Um, we are gonna do a slightly, I don't wanna say easier, we're gonna, Take it a little bit easier today. Because I'm tired. <laughs> um, but we are going to do some strategic things. There's a couple things I want to do. So we're going to start with, uh, I have something. We're going to do teach jacks because that's easy. Uh, I want you to grab some kind of weight and I want it to be on the heavier side, I'm gonna use a kettlebell. If you have a kettlebell, use a kettlebell. If you don't, that's okay. You can use a dumbbell, you can use any kind of weight. Um, use my purple, and I'm gonna go easy, but I'm grabbing the heavier weight. Whew. What we're gonna do, and, and a band, grab your band, because we are gonna do a couple things with bands today. What was I talking about? I don't know what I was saying. What on earth I was saying? All right. Let's start with TH jacks and I do air squats. All right. Let's go. TH jacks to start. I don't know what I was saying, but essentially the fear. Oh, is, is on how are you going to handle the situation? And I don't know, there's somehow, there's power in realizing that you're actually not scared of the thing. <laughs> that you're just scared of yourself. And you go, okay. And, okay, that's where I was going. So don't do it. So quit. And you guys, again, that might not work for everybody. Because on one hand, giving yourself an out sometimes gives you, is the weakness, right? You're like, oh, if you give yourself an out or a shortcut, you're gonna bound to take it. But for me, I need to give myself an out so that I can release all the expectations and pressure so that I can focus my energy and efforts on just getting the job done, if that makes sense. So let me give you an example. Tomorrow, I have in my head a plan to do 40 kilometers. Is my, this weekend is a big distance weekend for me. Because next weekend I'm away. So if I can get, anyway, that was my plan. Oh, that's what I was talking about. How plans never go to plan. Plans never actually go to plan. <laughs> but you still have to have a plan. Sometimes, you know, I've gotten in the habit lately of going, oh, what's the point of making a plan? It's not going to go to plan. But I think there's power in knowing, in having a plan, and then knowing that that plan is not going to, is not going to unfold the way you thought it was. But you can easily get back on track and adjust and pivot along the way. You can't really do that if you don't have a plan in the first place. So, well, already I'm... I'm tired this week, you guys. You know that because I've been saying this all week. I'm tired, and in my head, I'm not looking forward to 
to my room tomorrow. And I think, well, that's not good. Why am I not looking forward to it? It's because I'm getting in my head. It's because I'm making things up in my head. And so what I have to say to myself is, you don't have to do 40K tomorrow. Go out and just start your run. Take all your stuff with you and just start your run. But then once I've released that, then I can chip away at it and I'll get it done. Um, and I'll get it done with a lot less angst and stress and anxiety. And I guess my point really is, is usually it's not the thing that causes all the, wreaks all the havoc. It's the way we approach the thing with our mindset around the thing. And so I love learning these games that I play with myself um, because ultimately I do want to go, what's wrong? It's going to be a great day. Like it's a beautiful day. It's sunny. Um, it can be hot. But I'm going to go enjoy the forest. You know what? Today was actually beautiful this morning. There's a nice breeze. It's going to be hot, but it was beautiful. You, I think it's your focus, right? You focus on, if you're focused on the things, I watched a video recently, um, I think I may have shared this with you guys already, about skiers and skiing through the trees, and if they're thinking about don't hit the trees, the body can't read negativity, the body can't read a negative word, it only sees trees, like it can't, so if you're saying don't, don't hit the trees, don't hit the trees, you're gonna hit the trees, what you have to think of is the path, you have to focus on the path, so my point is what you focus on is what kind of grows, so if I'm focused on all the problems, well yeah, my, all my emotions around the thing are going to be on the negative, right? Whereas if I focus on building, I think we talked about this recently, like building the case for, for something instead of against something. So, you know, what are all the reasons I do want to be out there running tomorrow instead of focused on all the reasons I don't want to be? Anyways, I'm just battling. I don't even know what I'm saying right now, but okay. So we're going to do kettlebell swings next and lunges. My legs are pretty pooped. <laughs> this is what I wanted to do the other day on Tuesday, and I, had for, I couldn't remember. I knew there was something specific that I had wanted to do. I couldn't remember what it was. All right. So next Thursday, I have to cancel. As a side note, I just like, popped into my head just now. Okay, ready? Okay, so kettlebell swings, and if you don't have to have a kettlebell, you can do this weighted swings let's call it so you're hinging at the hips and thrusting hinging and thrusting hinge thrust you're not squatting you want to feel these in your in your glutes is where you should feel them like your butt that's why we're doing them you shouldn't really feel them in your lower back and you shouldn't be lifting the kettlebell if you struggle with those, I did a video on them, uh, not too long ago, an instructional video. It's in my reels. Oh, my legs are just, just, this is the last leg thing we're doing today. I ran this morning and we were pushing the pace a little bit and my legs were just, Quivering. I lie, this is not because we're doing 747s today. I need to do those. So the weight, think about a pendulum swinging. I hope that makes sense. You're not squatting and you're not lifting the weight. If your weight is too light, for kettlebell swings, what you're going to do is you're going to you're going to lift it, and then you're not going to do it properly. So I always encourage clients when I have clients here to go a little heavier because you want to use momentum, 
and expo explosiveness from your kettlebell swings. So you want to try to get that weight up to eye level if you can. I'm not swinging quite as high as I want to be here. Pulling that belly button in too. This is a great core, core exercise. Kettlebell swings are just fabulous for your core. You don't want to round it back, you want a straight back. to Cincinnati next weekend for a baseball showcase. So that's why, and originally we were gonna leave Wednesday night. So I was gonna squeeze in a workout Thursday morning, but we're leaving really early Thursday morning instead. So now I may, depending on our schedule, may do one Friday morning, but I'll have to wait and see so let's just say Tuesday, Wednesday next week for sure. So my goal, what I'm working on in terms of my mindset and my brain is minimizing what happens up here. Oh, this used to joke, it is a busy place. Like I think everything to absolute death. My husband just shakes his head. And it's something, it's funny because we take things on in life for whatever reason, we never really know why we're taking those things on, right? So this, I was thinking the other day, for example, I'll give you another example. I tend to be all in, all consumed with something, right? Like when I'm focused on something, it's like all in and everything else is like, so for a couple of years during COVID and just before COVID, I guess for a couple of years, like it was my business. I was, I was like this, um, so everything else fell. And then COVID came, I worked really hard in business, but I, I kind of, at the end of COVID, I was like, I gotta get back in shape. Like I put on some weight, was just wasn't feeling like who I was. Okay, 747s. So that, this is ugly. I really am not good at these. That's why we're doing them. You want to keep your hips side by side. See what I tend to do is I tend to go like this. You want to try to keep those hips side by side and you're hinging and you can use a weight if you want. Um, sometimes a weight actually makes it easier because it gives you a better sense of balance. I'm much better at doing these on this side because this is my troublesome hip. <laughs> Let's call it my angry stepchild hip. Um, anyways, so right now I'm really focused on running, like running is my, and my event. That's kind of become my focus. And the thing is, if I try to shift my focus out, I can't get my head back in the game very easily. Does anyone else, I don't think anyone else though, because I, I, I can't, I have trouble focusing on other things things at the same time, to the, at the same level that I'm focusing on one thing. I'm not sure if that makes sense. So God help me if I had a high, like, high stress job. I mean, I, a lot of people that do these things, that do ultra running, like, they're very high, high achieving people. Like, one guy that I used to know, I mean, he was a cancer surgeon. He had three kids and a wife. And I just think, holy crap, like, how do you, because when I go to flip my brain into a different focus, right? So let's say I'm really focused on 
work. Then when I go, I, it's like it's on or it's off. It can't seem to shift gears. <laughs> I don't know if I'm making any sense. So I was thinking about that today because I, because I used to work when I used to be really, really interested in running, and that was my focus. Well, I was personal training, so it kind of aligned with what else I was doing. And I was, I was working in a restaurant, serving tables. And so it didn't require really that much focus. I could just go and do my job and leave, but I could still be thinking about running the whole time. <sighs> Am I making any sense? I, I think I just did the wrong leg here. Um, so I thought to myself the other day, okay, this is no bueno. <laughs> I can't be all consumed with one thing. My business is really important to me. I lead a team of, of women who rely on me. I, and I actually absolutely love my customers. Like there's no doubt about that. That's, that's not an issue. I, my customers and my running kind of all are like my, my heart's content, so to speak. But my clients. I thought to myself, the reason is, I think too much about stuff, right? I'm in my head all the time, and that's, that's the problem. Like, I need to just be able to not have to think my way through everything. I don't know, I'm trying to put this into words. So, I, I guess an example would be, like, I have a 40K run tomorrow. I have to think about it all week long and psych myself up for it. And therein lies the problem. Because if I'm not psyching myself up for it, I'm psyching myself out of it. Why not just not psych anything? Why not just be do what's in front of you, and then on Friday when it comes time to do my run, focus on that. And that's, I guess, what I'm trying to say in a really, really not a very concise and articulate way, is if you're an overthinker, you waste a lot of energy um, planning which isn't always productive, um, you're planning for something mentally, and that's, that is a waste of your resources, your mental resources, which actually affects your physical resources. That's what I'm kind of trying to get at. So if you're a high stress um, overthinker, I'm not high stress, but I'm definitely an overthinker. So grab your band, we're gonna do um, hydrants next. We're working on some hip stuff, and then we're going to go into core after this. It just hit me kind of like as I was thinking, as I was thinking, that's the problem. Stop thinking. Just get up tomorrow and go. And don't think. Just turn, turn it off. I wish there was a switch. Wish I could unplug it. <laughs> All right. Okay, so hips are facing down and we're lifting. Okay, so these are, I said we were taking it a little easier today. These aren't like high intensity exercises, but they're high effectiveness, high efficiency exercises. So they're moves that are really advantageous um, to our health, well-being, physical strength, balance, um, And today was a great day to do a session that focuses on things like that. So this is a great core exercise too. In fact, I'm gonna count this as one of our core exercises. So I'll count on my next side to see how many that we're doing. Kind of wanna count my kettlebell swings too as a core exercise, because they certainly are. Especially if you go heavy to Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. So let's say ten. So make sure you're keeping your other hip facing down. You just want to be lifting that one leg. You don't want to be opening up, you don't want to be moving or tilting your whole body. So 
so we definitely have enough for our core. We're going to do some core work anyways. Yvonne, are your kids at a school yet, or how late, do you, how late do your kids go in terms of schooling? My high school boy finishes tomorrow, this is his last day, and my other son finishes next Wednesday, it's his last day. I know some kids around here are out already. They might as well be out. They're not doing anything this week. Um, they didn't, because of COVID, they, they didn't have exams this year. They had exams. They didn't have exams in the first semester because I guess because of COVID, so they're not having them the last semester. getting to me today. I'm going to do my yoga. I, 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 slept really, I slept quite well last night. I woke up actually early. I both love and hate these uh, early morning, like the sun being out in the, in the early morning, like in the 5 o'clock, 5.30, it's, it's light out. I love it and I hate it. Because <laughs> I woke up this morning, I don't know, it was five something, and I thought, I don't need to get up yet, I still, I don't need to get up till six. Uh, and part of me was like, if I wasn't so tired and needing to catch up on sleep, I was like, I would just get up now because it's so nice out, it's sunny. So, you know, I was like, oh, it would be nice to get up, but... Okay, we're gonna do plank and boat is our next one. Um, I had a point to that. <laughs> okay, let's go. So let's start with plank. Ready? High, high or low? I'm gonna alternate. I think I'll alternate just for fun. Oh, I know what I was gonna say. I woke up, so I woke up at five something. I didn't have to get up yet, so I went. I went back to sleep for a bit, and then my alarm went off. Apparently, I did not hear it. It was supposed to go off at six. I just happened to wake up again and look at my phone and think, because it's gotta be, it's gotta be close to six by now. Um, it was six eighteen, so my alarm had been going off for. 20 minutes and I didn't even hear it. My husband's like, yeah, I tried to wake you up. You were out. I don't think he could have possibly tried that hard because I wasn't, I was not, I was sort of in that light kind of, not quite asleep but not really awake type of thing. I don't know, I wear earplugs to sleep because Chris snores and it's so funny because these earplugs I got on a plane one time, those little yellow ones, yellow cylinders. Do, you, do any of you use earplugs? Probably not. <laughs> but anyway, they look, I was, I think I had, I think I had um, run out of earplugs and so that's all I had was these, those little yellow ones they give you on a plane. And, um, oh, these are killing me today too. My legs. <laughs> I, um, they're amazing. They are like the best earplugs I had ever had. 
So I bought a whole huge box of them from Amazon. Um, apparently they're too good because I didn't even hear my, my alarm going off. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to high plank now. Oh, we're doing this ladies. Honestly, we're getting it done. <laughs> Today's one of those days when I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe, I can't believe I, I'm getting this done. I'm getting through this and uh, You know, it's that, that old rule of thumb. It's always worth starting and trying because you just never know. Like I said, there's the odd time every now and then where, yeah, you should call it. Like you should take the rest day. If you're tired, you know, rest is super important. Our, you know, our adaptations, it's really easy, easy to just train hard all the time. What's not easy is figuring out when to train and when to rest. That's the trick. Um, you know, and to overcome those voices because we have those voices. That's what keeps, our, keeps us from doing stuff in the first place. But how do we know when to listen to those voices and when to dismiss those voices? When are those voices actually, you know, our inside intuition telling us you need rest? And when is it just, you know, your negative thoughts and your, you know, your brain, your brain wants to keep you comfortable. Your brain always looks for ways to keep you comfortable. That's why we complain that it's too hot in the summer and too cold in the winter, right? Because your brain always wants you to be comfortable. We seek, like truly seek comfort, and that's what gets us into trouble, right? <laughs> Instead of quitting. So it's kind of like 
like let's say you're on a road trip so you the the most important thing is like you have to know where you're going you have to have a vision you have to you have the vision the mission has to lead you right so you know that you know you're training for a marathon or your goal is to lose 20 pounds whatever you have your vision you have your mission that has to lead you so that day that you say okay I just can't do it today. Well, what can I do instead, instead of, I just won't do anything? There's such tremendous power in that because A, you didn't quit on yourself and not quitting on yourself builds confidence and builds trust and builds um, faith, right? And it also keeps you moving forward. So it could be, okay, well, I'm gonna do my, so like, for example, today, I could just tell I needed a lighter workout, okay? So instead of canceling and not doing the workout, what can I do that's going to be beneficial to me today that I wasn't planning on doing core? You know, you can never not benefit from core, and core doesn't have to be um, grueling, a grueling thing to try to recover from, right? So go for a walk, um, do yoga, Way, you didn't actually bail on yourself you just pivoted and adapted so to use the road trip analogy you're going you have your vision your mission you're going to Disney of course you're going to Disney um, driving to Disney is 20 hours so you, you have your plan your map your directions is your plan and there's an accident well you don't just turn around and go home you find another road right like you, you reroute your GPS reroutes you so Find another road instead of turning around and going home. Next time you run into kind of that roadblock, um, mentally or physically. All right, we are done. I thank you for another week. I, boy, I needed you ladies this week. I'm not gonna lie, um, and I am so grateful to have had your companionship this week. Um, enjoy your weekend. Enjoy the weather. Have an awesome day and I will see you next Tuesday.